Istanbul Society and Iraz is active with the community and the interfaith activities for the past 25 years and he is keenly involved in the uh, development of youth. So uh, Raza teaches Hinduism, Sanskrit, and Indic studies. Two of his books have been published on Sanskrit uh, grammar and uh, one book on religion and prayer uh, are under uh, review for publication. Um, as I mentioned, the, the Hindu Temple Society in uh, Bridgewater, they have been very active with our diversity coalition. They do annual um, Indian American festival. I think they draw more than eight, ten thousand people. In fact, they have now gone to, I think, the Edison, not Edison, the uh, Garden State uh, Center because they couldn't accommodate all the people. Obviously, the you know the Indian community is growing, and uh, please welcome Raza Bandar. Namaste. I'm going to take a very brief moment on, instead of talking about how great the scriptures are, uh, two days back I was on a panel in St. Peter's Hospital uh, discussing how the religion takes care of people who are terminally ill, that what we call a medical process fertility management. The, all the physicians of different faiths have finally decided that this person is going to die. And what does religion say in those situations? Uh, they have given us about a bunch of case studies of different patients. And we are asked to say, if it were your family, your parents, your children, how do we advise the physicians to do that? And the, what is life after death? So it was a long discussion for, uh, there were a lot of physicians there and other healthcare professionals. One of the biggest difficulty and challenge we face in life is facing the sorrow. That's number one. It's easy to face happiness. Facing sorrow is the most difficult thing. And if you look at our basic prayer, all our basic prayers end with three words. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. And a simple question comes to people is that, why do we say it three times? That's one question. And what does scripture say about it? And here we are, we pray and prostrate to our Guru. We don't call them a professor or a teacher. We call them Guru. And what is death? And how do we face death? Because death is the most sorrow part of the, our life. I have a whole bunch of slides, but I'm not going to go through them. Uh, so say already gave me a warning. <laughs> so, um, let me take a simple case. Why do we prostrate to Guru? The word Guru has two words, Gu and Ru. Our scriptures say one thing, Gukaras Andhakaras Thwa, Rukaras Tannivartaka, Andhakara Nirodhitva, Guru Ritya Vidhiyate. The sound Gu comes from a root called Guh, which is to hide, to dark. So we say Guhar Cave. Cave is very dark. Ru are Ruh, to take away, to live. Uh, the Guru is the one who lifts us from darkness to enlightenment. He does not teach what is in a book and he does not profess. So we use two terms for Guru Guru and Acharya. The one who practices what he teaches is Acharya, not what he teaches. What he teaches something and practice different. So these are the two fundamental things that differs Hinduism from the rest of the religions in a practical sense. Uh, here in Hinduism I include most of the religions based on Vedas, which includes Hindu, Jains, Sikhs, Buddhism, and 